G'day guys, welcome back to Off-Road Crusader, the home of fitting big parts to big cars. Well, so far anyway. <laughs> this episode, we are addressing a thing called brake wobble or steering wobble. This tends to happen when you are braking and pulling up to a set of lights or something like that, and you feel like the steering wheel is sort of wobbling a little bit under braking. You're not turning a corner or anything, but there's that bit of wobble there. That is caused by your brake rotors, these big things, um, being not square, so they're not flat anymore. They've got a warp in them. That can occur for a number of reasons. The main one, especially for four wheel drives, is they get hot under braking. You go through a puddle, you go through a water crossing, whatever, you get some water on your brake rotors. They then start to cool unevenly and it will cause the metal to sort of shrink and grow in different areas and cause that warpage. Different cars will be more susceptible to it than others. My understanding is that if you have larger brakes, as in you've got say 17 or 18 inch wheels that the car comes factory with, then you are more likely to get it just because you've got a larger surface area. So more likely chance of heat not being able to dissipate nice and evenly, but um, it will really depend on the vehicle. Quick disclaimer, if you haven't worked on your brakes before, if you're not 100% confident, if you don't know what you're doing, get help, ask a mechanic, ask a mate who's a mechanic, watch a bunch of YouTube videos like mine, which I'll put a link to probably up there somewhere. Um, and don't jump into this project if you're not 100% sure. The braking system on your car is so important. Obviously, if you forget to do up a little 10 mil bolt like your bleeder valve, then uh, you're gonna put your car into a tree, which is not good, and you're gonna try and blame me, but I'm just this guy on the internet and the, the lawsuit will fall through. So anyway, if you're not 100% confident, definitely don't give this a go as your first uh, mechanical project. Get someone who knows what they're doing and get them to walk you through it as well. That being said, you're gonna watch this video of me, a completely unqualified mechanic, giving this a go. I've done this a bunch of times. I've seeked help from uh, multiple mechanics and I know what I'm doing in terms of how to fit these to the car and especially to the 200 series. Now, in order to fix the wobble under braking, you are going to need to sort out why your rotors are not square. The cheapest and easiest way to do that is going to be to get your rotors machined. Uh, depending on how much, like the condition of your rotor and how much material is left in it, you may or may not be able to do this, but it is a relatively cheap process. You're taking the rotors off anyway, you can then sort of restore, restore what you've got there. The next step up is obviously going to be to change over your rotors for a new set. Uh, that can be anything from something cheap and cheerful to sort of top end stuff. I replaced a set of rotors on my Prado. I think they were about 60 bucks or something like that. They were a real bargain basement thing. They didn't last, they, ru they rusted very quickly, and they ended up warping very quickly as well. I wasn't very happy with them at all, and I ended up changing them over. That's why this time I've decided not to muck around. It's a 200 series, I want it to break as well as it can do, and really, if you're gonna invest money into your car, you may as well put it into your brakes. So, I've got these. These are DBA T3 rotors. They're a 4000 series rotor, so they're one of the better ones they make, uh, just short of their race spec stuff. These have a bunch of things, so they're a slotted rotor, which helps to get rid of dust and gas when you're braking. Uh, they're uh, ventilated with a unique pattern on them, so it actually helps to dissipate heat much better. It also is made from a high carbon uh, iron alloy, which is really good for heat dissipation and making sure that your rotors will heat evenly and cool evenly, which is obviously key to stopping them from warping next time. So <laughs> hoping to avoid that. Since you're gonna have the caliper off anyway, you may as well change over your brake pads as well. Since you're putting new rotors on it, keep everything fresh, keep your brake system in 100%. I've chosen to go with the Bendix full drive brake pads. I've used them before in the Prado to great success and I really like them. They were also on special, they were available, so I got them. They are also some really good brake pads you can get from DBA, but they weren't on special at my local shop and they weren't readily available. So I grabbed these because I'm happy with them. And last but not least, the best thing about these rotors Comes with a sticker, totally worth it. I've only got a limited amount of time that Coda's gonna be asleep for, so I'm gonna jump straight in and film me replacing the rotors and pads on my 200 series. Afterwards, we can actually have a good break. With the car jacked up and supported on chassis stands, you can now remove your wheel nuts and get your wheel and tire out of the way and put it under the car for extra safety. If your car's as muddy as mine, definitely give the wheel arch a good clean before you start sticking your head under there. Remove the 12mm bolt that holds the brake line bracket to the spindle arm. Be sure to detach this bracket, which will allow the caliper to move far enough away from the rotor and help you to get your work done. You can now also remove the two 19mm bolts that hold the caliper to the backing plate. These will probably be on there pretty tight.
You can now start removing the brake pads from the caliper. Start by removing the pin retaining clip as shown. You can then also remove the two sliding pins just by pulling them out. Followed by the anti chatter spring that sits between the two pads. Be sure to put an old rag down behind the caliper, then crack the bleed nipple on the top of the caliper to allow the brake fluid to escape. I then use a flat bladed screwdriver between the brake rotor and the pad to push the pads back against the pistons and push the pistons back into the caliper. Having the bleed nipple open will allow that brake fluid to escape and release the pressure. If your brake pads or your brake rotors were fairly new, I probably wouldn't recommend this as you may damage the pads or the rotors. But as I'm replacing both, I don't mind if they need to scratch them a little bit with the screwdriver. With the last push on the pad, be sure to tighten up that bleed nipple at the same time. This will stop any air from getting back into the system and make sure that the brake fluid isn't compromised. You can now just simply slide out the old brake pads to make way for the new ones. You can now remove the caliper away from the hub and push it all the way to this spot on the lower control arm. You can see there's a hole there and what you can actually do is put a screwdriver through one of the caliper bolt holes and into this hole on the lower control arm. As you can see it holds the caliper out of the way and there is no strain on the brake line. Now you can just simply take the rotor off of the hub. So in order to make sure that the new brake rotors don't warp anymore, uh, we need to make sure that the two mating surfaces are as smooth and clean as possible. And that's obviously where this hub face is here, where your studs are coming out. You can see mine's got a little bit of corrosion and stuff on there. That's just normal from moisture getting in. I'm going to uh, clean it all back with some emery paper um, or some wet and dry, whatever you want to call it. Make sure this is a nice clean surface, then we can stick the rotor on. Unwrap your shiny brand new brake rotors, then apply some brake cleaner onto a rag. Wipe this on all the shiny surfaces of the brake rotor to remove the protective wax. Place the new brake rotor onto the hub, threading it through the wheel studs and making sure it seats squarely onto the hub face. You can then refit the caliper to the backing plate, making sure to tighten up both the bolts. It is recommended to tighten these bolts to 99 newton meters. After this, you can secure the brake line bracket back to the spindle using the 12 millimeter bolt that you removed earlier. It's now time to fit up the new brake pads. Take note of the inscription marked on the inside of the brake pads. They will either say inner right, like this one here, or inner left, or they can also be marked outer, which will work either left or right. Apply some high temperature grease to the outer metal surfaces of the pads and then you can slide them into the caliper between the piston and the new brake rotor. Be sure not to get any of this grease on any of the braking surfaces. You may need to rest a little bit with the new brake rotor to get it to line up nice and square so the second pad will go in nicely. Lightly grease the pins and then you can slide them through the holes in the caliper through each of the brake pads and then out the other side as well. Again, be sure not to get any of this grease onto the actual braking surface. You can now refit the anti-chatter spring on the lower end of the brake pads. Be sure to line it up so that the bottom pin will pass through the eye and that each of the hooked surfaces fits into the brake pad. Finally, fit the lower pin through both the brake pads and the new chatter spring and then refit the pin retainer clip into the back of each of the pins. Finally, you can refit the tyres and rims back onto the vehicle with your wheel nuts. Be sure to listen to your on-site supervisor who will inform you of the correct torque setting for your wheel nuts. Lower the car back onto the ground. You can then get your boss to oversee as you check your wheel nuts for the final time, making sure they're nice and tight.
Be sure to check your brake fluid under the bonnet. If it's low, top it up to the full mark using either DOT3 or DOT4 brake fluid as specified by your manufacturer. I've got to say, I was actually really impressed with the improvement that the DBA slotted rotors and the Bendix pads made over standard. The VX has the larger brakes, same with the Sahara models as well, so it stops really, really well. But um, honestly, I wish I'd done this sooner because it's it just a really good upgrade to have. And um, it just feels so much more sure when you're, when you're braking up to something that you need to stop at really, really quickly. Um, it's obviously removed the steering shutter that I was getting. That's always a nice thing to remove a problem that you've had from the start, which got progressively worse over time. Never a huge issue, but um, it now just feels so much nicer to drive. Bendix do say that with the blue stripe technology on the four-wheel drive pads, there's no need to bed them in. However, it's probably worth noting, you should probably just take it easy on them for the first sort of 100, 200 Ks just to make sure they're gonna work and last for a while as well. Just a reminder as well that if you can go without a cup of coffee this week, maybe consider supporting Off-Road Crusader and uh, making me grow as a channel. So you're looking at five bucks each for a sticker, 10 bucks for a patch, or 35 for the shirt. So I've got a bunch of more sizes coming now, which is really, really cool. And I've also got a new design coming as well, which is gonna be really cool. So keep an eye out for that one there. These really do help to support the channel. So look, if you're feeling generous and you think that my content's worth a few bucks, then uh, consider jumping onto the Off-Road off Crusader online store. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Um, I'll put the link in the description of this video. Thanks guys very much for watching and we will catch you in the next episode. Cheers.